Hi, I'm Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at smart objects, which offer a lot of flexibility when designing with Photoshop CS4. Here's how it works. Smart object essentially embeds a copy of the image inside the layer. So if you've got a layer here selected, you could right click and say convert to smart object. When you do that, you'll notice that its icon changes, indicating that this is a smart object. Now, what this means is, is when you scale the image, the original data is preserved inside. So if I were to scale this all the way down very small and press return, I would have just discarded lots of information about that layer. But because it's a smart object, all that information is stored inside that particular layer. You can go ahead and press Command-T for free transform and scale that back up and you'll see that the image scales cleanly. So great flexibility with these. Let's go ahead and position that right there. Similarly with smart objects, we can actually grab a layer here, right click and convert it to a smart object, and you'll see that we can take advantage of things like smart filters. Now we'll explore filters more in an upcoming episode. But filters allow you to do specialized operations to an image that process the pixels. So for example, we could say filter, stylize, emboss. And you see that it quickly stylized that image, picking up details in it. Now if you want, you could even double click on this little arrow here and play with things like blending modes that allow you to mix the details of that filter in. So there we got a nice emboss effect, but we blended it back in to see the original colors. Command T for free transform. It says the filter is going to be turned off temporarily while we transform, which is fine. Position it where we need to. And press return, and all the results are restored. Here's our last image here. Let's go ahead and right click on Cathedral and turn that to a smart object and then Command T for free transform. Now the smart object under Photoshop CS4 also offers access to all sorts of things like the ability to do warp or right click and access all of the controls from the free transform command. This allows us to do things like perspective to introduce a tilt to a particular photo to make it look like it's angled within the scene. And you could choose to do things like that to add a little bit of flexibility to your design options. For example here, let's go ahead and choose perspective and make it look like this photo is rotated inwards. And we'll do that to the top image here, creating a sense of motion within the design, pushing things towards the center. We can right click and go back to scale and notice combine two transform operations into one. So great flexibility. And if you ever change your mind, simply go up to the layer menu and choose Smart Objects. You see you've got great things here like the ability to step inside of the Smart Object and actually make adjustments to it and it opens back up. We could then go in here and modify the image or maybe zoom in here and take out this little distracting detail. Let's grab our Clone Stamp Tool, S, Option Click to Sample, and quickly remove some of these details that are distracting. There we go. And you see that we could pull that out just fine. Close and save, and the smart object updates. If needed, you can also choose smart objects, export contents, and this will write the file back to the desktop. This is a great way to actually extract a layer and get at those original pixel details. Or if you want, you could choose Layer Smart Objects, Replace Contents, and actually swap one layer for a new photo. Smart Objects are incredibly flexible. There's lots to them, and we've actually done several tutorials that go more in depth. Be sure to check some of those tutorials out at our website, rastervector.com, or just subscribe in iTunes or the Adobe Media Player and you can have access to our back episodes. My name's Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed visiting us this week, and we'll see you next week where we'll be talking more about all sorts of great things like modifying selections. Thanks again.